Today, I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide of the Rabbit R1 2024. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as a Rabbit R1 2024 expert. Let's get started. So here we have it. On the front of the box here, you've got what looks like um, two versions of the Rabbit R1, and they also look like bunny ears. It's kind of like an interesting design choice. You've got the name Rabbit R1 right here in a pull tab, and on the back some logos and your serial information, the color, and then um, this design here on the side. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'll go ahead and take out um, my keys here, and we will peel off the plastic of this box, just like this. And there we have it. So pretty simple box, pretty simple design. Um, it looks like you can just lift it open here. Let's see, oh, there's a little pull tab right here. So we're gonna go ahead and open this for the very first time. It's got a nice little pull tab. We'll go ahead and open it up just like that. And we've got another version of their logo, Rabbit. So inside, you're presented with this little gray styrofoam piece right here. We can take that off. And then you've got the device itself right here. You can just take it out. Pretty simple packaging, um, nothing too fancy. And it doesn't come with a charging cable, so no USB cable or no brick, no you know extra battery, nothing too crazy. It's just the rabbit itself. So you will need your own charging cable and your own charging brick in order to use the Rabbit R1. So this comes in, you know, it's nice bright orange color. Um, you can see here on the side what it looks like. Really handy. Um, it's wrapped in some plastic right here. We can go ahead and rip that off. And just like that, we have successfully taken off the plastic. We've got our serial number. You can scan the QR code for a user guide on how to set it up, but you've got our information right here. The color, the, it's an AI companion and where it was designed at, the input, and you know more regulatory information that we need to know. What I'm really curious is how do you open this plastic case? Because it's in a case, it has another little cover of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and rip that plastic cover piece off like that. And then, let's see, how do we open this case? There, all right, I found it, I think. So one cool thing about the case is it outlines all of the features that are on the Rabbit. So here you can see this R1 has a speaker, and it says speaker. It has a scroll wheel, a scroll wheel, and then a Rabbit eye, which is the camera. And then over here, you've got your input where you hold down to get the microphone access. You've got the USB-C cable right here, the SIM card slot. And I'm not sure what that little button up there is. And then at the top, you've got the microphone. So the case doubles as kind of like a um, manual letting you know where everything is. So that's a really nice touch. So we'll go ahead and flip this around and I'll go ahead and open it up. So it just opens up just like that. And here we're presented with it. We've got the R1. So we can go ahead and take the R1 out of the case just like this and we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and put the case over to the side here and it says please peel off the mask. Please peel off the mask with this sticker. So that I guess there's a mask on the front. We'll go ahead and peel it off just like that. And this thing is tiny. Wow, this is nice. I like this. Um, so we can take a look, a deeper look. Now that we've got it outside the case, we've got the USB-C cable, the SIM card slot. We press this to talk to it. We've got the scroll wheel where we can scroll and then the camera there. So let's see, how do we turn this thing on? Um, do we just hold down the button? All right, yep, we just hold down the side button right here and that turns on the rabbit. You've got the logo right here. So it says the logo and it's booting up for the very first time here. So we can go through this setup process, which is really exciting. It's got the R1 logo 
and it's you know animating and rotating around and we're almost good to go here so we'll see how this setup process goes and compares to setting up other AI devices so um, it's asking us to press the button so we press the button and now it wants to connect so we need to select a network so in order to select, it's got all the little Wi-Fi networks right here, as you can see nearby, and we can scroll to select whichever network that we need, just like that. So I'll go ahead and select my network, and I'll press the trigger button to select it. Uh, and now it has this animation going on. Where it, does it want us to rotate? <laughs> wow, that was fancy. Honestly, I didn't know what that meant. I saw, you know, I saw the device, an animation of the device popping up and then rotating. And I was like, why, why is it rotating? It didn't tell me to rotate. I think it would have been helpful if there's some text on the display. But now it wants us to enter the passcode. Um, so let me go ahead and do this off camera. Um, so this thing is a touch screen, which I was not aware of. But I just type in my passcode just like this. And that's pretty fancy. Um, I just press enter. So I rotated it, I'm gonna rotate it back and it's connecting. So that was really cool because I had no idea that this thing was a touch screen. And um, I just thought there's just the little scroll wheel and the button right here. So next up we have to activate. So I have to go to rabbit.tech slash activate to link to my account. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my phone here and we'll unlock my phone and type in this website onto the Safari web browser and we'll go to, let's see what it is, rabbit. So I'm gonna type in rabbit.tech slash activate. And then we'll go ahead and um, activate this for the very first time. So it's loading login.rabbit.tech and it wants us to log in to, uh, it's calling it the rabbit hole. That's pretty clever there. So we'll need to log in um, using our email address and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that privately off camera here. Check out today's sponsor, Rakuten, where you can get a $30 bonus today when you sign up using the link in the description, appfind.org slash Rakuten. You can shop at your favorite stores with over 3,500 stores to check out and you install the plugin, create an account on Rakuten and earn cash back today. It's really cool that you can come here and get paid to shop, and of course you can earn your $30 bonus today using the link in the description. This helps out the AppFind channel a lot, so check out today's sponsor, Rakuten, using the link appfind.org slash Rakuten. All right, I'm good to go. I've logged in, and next I need to select I agree to the terms of service, privacy policy, and cookie policy, and we'll go ahead and hit continue there, and it will start loading up inside the rabbit. So it looks like something went wrong. Let's try this again. All right, so I tried this again, and it wants me to check my email. It sent, sent me an email. I need to follow the instructions to log in successfully. So I'll go ahead and verify my email address, and we'll see how this goes. Um, verify my rabbit hole email. So I found the email in my email address. I'm going to click verify, and it takes me right back to the web browser. So email is verified. I'm good to go ahead and log in. Let's go to continue to log in right here. So just click the blue continue button, and I'll go ahead and log in one more time. And we'll click continue and get this set up properly. So now we are connected. So I've successfully set up my rabbit hole account. I only ran into one error where I had to go, you know, essentially re-log in. And we are now able to connect an R1 account. Let's go ahead and connect our R1 account. I'm going to go ahead and press the orange connect an R1 account right here. And it wants us to go ahead and build out the profile. So it wants us to type in our full name. I'll go ahead and do that type in our full name and then we'll hit continue. Now it wants us to scan the QR code with your R1 to activate the device. So I'll go ahead and bring up my device, the scroll pad. So yeah, they have a scroll pad right here and then I press the button and now I can scan the QR code. Cool, successfully linked to Justin's account. So just like that, I scanned the QR code and we are good to go.
So now I can connect my favorite services to R1 to access music, streaming, ride sharing, and more. I can connect to Spotify, I can connect to Uber, I can connect to DoorDash, and I can connect to MidJourney. So really cool. Um, they've only added a few services here for us to get started at first. Spotify requires a paid account. And um, let's see. So let's go ahead and connect our Spotify. So I'll click connect. To ensure the best experience, please use a desktop browser or wider screen. We're working on mobile support and we appreciate your patience. Okay, let's try that. So I've gotten a bigger screen because they said their mobile support um, for this process was not good. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in on my bigger screen here. We'll go ahead and hit continue. And um, so right now, the first section of the rabbit hole portal is journal. Start interacting with your rabbit on your R1 um, to create journal entries. So I guess as you talk to it, it will document everything right here inside of this portal called journal. So next up is the connections, which is what we were on our phone. So we can connect. Let's start off with Spotify. I'm going to go ahead and connect my Spotify account. So I'll press that. I'll hit connect um, and it will take me over to log in through Spotify. So I'm going to go ahead and do this um, and I'm going to, can you scroll? I see why this is a little bit difficult because I'm doing it kind of like on their, their web browser here. Um, so can I type? Yeah, this is interesting. Um, all right, so I successfully connected my Spotify account and it, I don't know how to describe the way this the technology works. It's very different because you have to connect it. Um, it looks like it's on its own computer or its own software, um, but let's see if it looks like that for Uber too when we connect an Uber account. So we hit connect for Uber account. And what happens is, is this portal pops up which allows us to enter in and connect our Uber account. Um, but one thing that's interesting is it's like a mouse has appeared. Like it's its, its own computer in a way because iPads don't have mouses um, or mouse support, or at least they don't look like that. And then for, for pasting and stuff, you have to press this button over here. If I wanted to paste in my password, I've got to paste over there and then it pastes in the passcode. So very interesting technology. Um, I'm going to go ahead and privately enter in my Uber account, username and password, and I'll be right back. Today's video is sponsored by a children's book titled Enough, A Best Self Adventure. You can purchase this book using the Amazon link in the comments and description below. This is perfect if you have kids or if you have family members and you want them to live their happiest childhood. You can check out Enough, A Best Self Adventure using the Amazon link in the description below. You can see the incredible illustrations alongside of the text here. So you can go ahead and check out this book titled Enough, A Best Self Adventure perfect for young children in the description below and purchase your very own copy today. All right, we're back and I've connected some of my services. Now this was a bit difficult to do on the iPhone and the iPad. I had to use my laptop, my desktop computer, and it requires logging into these services on, um, you know, a different platform. I don't, I'm not sure how to explain the technical uh, way of how this works, but it was pretty different than just connecting an auth account like you normally do. Um, it it kind of had its own like computer, its own version of a system that you logged into. And um, I was able to successfully connect Spotify, Uber, and DoorDash. And then it, the issue with Spotify is it requires a paid account. The issue with Uber is you have to have um, your password or you can't log in through Google. And MidJourney requires a paid account. So these are the services that are currently set up on my rabbit device under connections. I can press the three dots here. I can go back to journal. You can see that I haven't asked my rabbit R1 anything yet. And I can go into settings and look at things like my profile or the device and all of my different connections there. Um, so really cool pieces of software there. Um, I'll go back to the journal. And now that I've connected these things, I should theoretically be able to use my rabbit. I can tap on it and it says that successfully linked to Justin's account. So it looks like I cannot hit the continue button. I have to scroll down using the wheel here and then press the button on the side here. Now it wants us to create a passcode. So create a passcode, you only need to enter it when you make a purchase. So I'll go ahead and hit continue. Again, I can't use the touch screen there. I need to hit the button on the right. So now I'll go ahead and hit the 
the scroll wheel right here to create my passcode. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera, but I'll show you. All you have to do is just use the scroll wheel to select which passcode you want. And then you can go ahead and um, select the side button to enter that digit. So I've gone ahead and pressed the side button um, and you can see one digit is there. And now I can scroll and find my next passcode. So again, I'm gonna do this off camera so my passcode stays secure. And that way um, we're you know not leaking any password information. So I've got my passcode set up. It shows it on the screen. It lets us know what it is. I'm gonna press the button to confirm it. And now it wants us to re-enter the passcode. So I've gone ahead, I've picked my passcode, and then it says to confirm it, re-enter it one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my passcode one more time here off camera to stay secure as possible. And it says again, you only need to enter this passcode once you um, make a purchase. So we are almost good to go. And enter my passcode. All right, passcode has been successfully set and we're good to go. So you can take photos, it looks like, just by pressing the button on the side here. Let's see. Um, so we can take a photo. Oh, double click for the camera. So we'll go ahead and double click and press and hold to talk. So press and hold to talk. It's giving us some pointers of how to use the rabbit. So press and hold to talk. And now we are good to go. So charging and connected. So it's got some text scrolling across. We've got the network connected. It wants us to be able to charge the device. Um, in order to move forward. So I'll go ahead and do that. It says, please connect the charger. I'm curious why it wants us to charge the, con why it wants us to connect the charger during the setup process when it didn't include a charger in the box at all. So you would have to go find your own USB-C cable, which we can do. Um, I can walk over here and grab a USB-C cable. So give me a second here. I'll grab the USB-C cable and we will charge the device and be good to go. So I'm going to bring my cable over here. All right. Got it. So now we know why it wants us to charge it. It wants to update. So you got to plug it up. That is definitely an interesting design choice. So it's connecting to the internet and now it's up updating. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. It's charging the device and updating. And um, I assume as soon as it finishes with its update, we'll be able to use the, uh, the Rabbit R1. So let's see if we can get to 1% or more here. It says, please stay. This is scrolling by very slowly here, but it says, please, please stay connected to the charger or to the internet. <laughs> So please stay connected to the internet. I guess it has to download the update first and then it has to install it. So it's charging, it's updating, and there it goes. It's starting the download process. You can see at 1% there. Um, so we are good to go with this rabbit download. I'm gonna go ahead and let this download and install. It's already at 3%. It's moving a little faster, uh, 4%. So it doesn't look like this will take very long, but we'll be right back after this updates. Here we have it. It looks like our rabbit is booting back up from a software update. The R1 logo is there and it's rotating and animating on the screen. So in order for the software update to go through successfully, it does need to be charged. It will stop updating if the charger is unplugged and it also needs to be connected to Wi-Fi. If it loses, it wi if it loses its Wi-Fi connection, it will stop too. So it's booting back up here. Um, really exciting times. And there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the charger since the update is good to go. We can bring back the Rabbit R1 center frame here. We've got the time 440 and it's 93% charged and the Rabbit is just chilling, bouncing. How are you doing today? So I held... I'm here and ready to assist you. How? How do I turn up the volume? So you can find like this page by gently shaking the device. Once there, you can adjust the output volume to your preference. So 
so we shake it goes to settings and then we can go down to volume so just to remember this is not a touch screen even though the keyboard was um, and then it wants us to hold I'm not sure what I'm holding oh that says voice hello oh you used the scroll wheel got it okay so you've got to hold down and play with two buttons at the same time in order for this to work properly so if you want to change the voice you hold down the button then you adjust the volume using the scroll wheel kind of crazy that you've got to use two hands to do that but that's how you do it so I'm gonna hold down the voice and turn up the volume all the way and then how do we go home we just scroll up we scroll up to go home Tell me a fun fact about you. I don't have personal experiences or emotions, but I can provide you with interesting information on a wide range of topics. Feel free to ask me anything you'd like to know. What is the weather in San Diego? Searching now. The current weather forecast for San Diego on April 25th, 2024 is cloudy skies with a high of 64 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are expected to be from the west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. What is your coolest feature? One of the standout features of the Aero One device is its 360 degrees camera eye which allows you to see the world from a unique perspective. It can assist you in identifying objects, editing documents, and even translating text using the camera view. If you have any specific questions or tasks in mind, feel free to let me know how I can assist you further. So you may be wondering, how do you use this Rabbit R1? It's a pretty fancy device and it has multiple ways to interact with it. The main way you navigate is by voice. It has a push to talk button on the side and you hold it down and ask it any question or command to give it. Now, in order to get into settings, you shake. You just shake the device and settings pop open. You can scroll on the Rabbit R1 using the scroll wheel to scroll down and to scroll up and things are selected. Now, you may be wondering, how do you get back? There is no back button on the Rabbit R1 and the touch screen is not functional. So you absolutely have to use the scroll wheel in order to select things and to get back. So to get back on the Rabbit R1, you have to scroll all the way up to the very top of the first selection that's possible. And then it will allow you to go back by pressing this button on the side. So we can just press it once and it takes us back. So we can shake to go into settings, we can scroll, and then in order to select an option in the settings, all you have to do is just press the button on the side. So for volume and brightness and a few other things here, you have to use two hands to modify them. If I select the volume by pressing the button on the side, I can change the voice volume, the media volume, or the system volume. And you have to hold down this button on the side to change the volume. And while you're holding it down, you can adjust it using the scroll wheel. So it's kind of like a two hand operation here. You have to hold down the button and adjust the scroll wheel to adjust the volume. And now we looked at how we go back earlier. You have to scroll up to the very top and it allows you to go back. You just press the side button there and it allows you to go back. So we're going to dive in deeply into all of these settings and then check out some other vision features on the Rabbit R1 here. So inside of settings, we can adjust the brightness. You just hold down. And once you've hovered over brightness with the scroll wheel, and then you can hold down the side button and adjust the brightness by modifying it using the scroll wheel. So for some reason, the Rabbit R1 does not allow you to use the touch screen to modify things. It does have a touch screen built in, but it's not useful because it doesn't work. You have to use the side button. You have to use the scroll wheel to control the operating system. Now, you saw earlier we 
we're able to use the touch screen um, in order to type in our Wi-Fi password, which was cool. It told us to turn sideways. So when you're using the terminal and when you're using the Wi-Fi, you can type in the password, um, but you cannot use the actual operating system elsewhere using touch. It would be so much easier to touch network or to touch Bluetooth or to touch settings and to go back, but that is not enabled right now on the Rabbit R1. You absolutely have to use the scroll wheel in order to modify settings. So we've taken a look at brightness. We just took a look um, at volume. You just hold and um, once you select it, you can, you can change the media volume. You hold and you scroll down and you scroll up just like this. Now, one downside to this is when you are playing music, you can't just change the volume while you're in the music app. You have to exit the music app, go to the settings by shaking your device and then go into volume and then change the volume. Um, kind of disappointing compared to the Humane AI pin. You can modify the volume at any time just by touching the touchpad. So system uh, volume is right here. And then of course to go back, you scroll all the way up to the top, you press the side button and it goes back. We've got volume, we've got Bluetooth. We can connect and turn on Bluetooth for things like headphones. And it starts to search for other connections and other devices that are nearby. We don't have any Bluetooth devices nearby. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off for now. But if you did, you would be able to connect them inside of the Bluetooth settings. You just press this to toggle it on and it starts searching for other Bluetooth devices, just like that. We can go up here, go back to settings. You've got network, so you can do things like cellular and Wi-Fi. Now, this is one of the coolest devices that I've seen that does not require the typical SIM eject tool because the SIM tray, you just stick your fingernail in and you pull it out and it comes out just like this and you stick your SIM card in it and it allows you to get cellular data um, and access this on the go. So that's how we were able to get data there you can come in here, you can turn on cellular just by sticking in your SIM card and flipping the switch on that way. Now, Wi-Fi is also important. It's required for updating, but you can scroll down, turn on Wi-Fi. So you see our current network we're connected to and other networks that are nearby. So network is in incredibly important because a lot of the stuff that you do on the Rapid R1, you absolutely have to have the internet connection. There's no offline mode. It needs to talk back to its servers and talk back to you. So whether you're doing that through your Wi-Fi network or the cellular connection, um, you know, you'll need the network access in order to access the Rabbit R1's operating system. So we can scroll back up to the top here to go back. We see settings in the back button and then we press the side button and it allows us to go back. We can see things like the time, time set for automatic right now, the texture time zone. You can turn off automatic and manually set it. I wanna go back, you can see things like security. And I'm gonna open up security on the side here. Um, you can do things like change your passcode. Um, so you do have a passcode when you make purchases on the Rabbit R1, and then you can change that passcode if you want to. So we'll go back up just like that. You can power it off. You can enable terminal. You can see things like the about, the compliance, and the disclaimer. And those are all of your settings inside of the Rabbit R1. Really cool features that you can come in here and of course you shake to get into settings But you have to scroll all the way up to the very top This is probably the worst part of the rabbit r1 in order to get back You have to scroll all the way up to the very top Then the back button appears and then you tap it on the side and it takes you back to the home page right here So on the rabbit os we mentioned earlier actually the rabbit os mentioned its coolest feature is this 360 rotational camera and you access it by double tapping the side button so all you have to do is just double tap right here and the camera um, that turned it off so i'm going to tap it one more time and double tap and it will turn on vision so now the camera is on now you can rotate the camera by using the scroll wheel. Right now, the camera is on in the back. It just rotates up just like that. Now we can use the scroll wheel and just rotate it to us. And now you can see the camera. You can see me as I type or talk here. And I can rotate it back to flip it around. And I can just ask it, what do you see? And it says, let me take a look. Starts the process and I see a, a wooden surface or floor with a light yellowish brown color and distinct wood grain patterns. The wood appears to have a smooth, polished finish. The image shows a simple, minimalist wooden background with no other visible elements. We can add something like this SIM card in it. What kind of tool is this? So 
to hold down the talk and then it starts to process and think. Little rabbit ears come up um, and... Taking a look now, this appears to be a paper clip. It is a small metal paper clip shaped object lying on a wooden surface. So the rabbit R1 doesn't know what a Simacek tool is, but it does look like a paper clip, so we'll give it that. So it's not always accurate, not always perfect, um, but we can go even deeper. We can add in like a box here of the Google phone, and then we can say, what's on my desk? Let me take a look. On your desk, I see a Google Pixel 8 Pro phone in a light blue color resting on the box it came in, which has the Google logo prominently displayed. There we go. So um, it thinks the phone is real. It thinks it's laying on top of the box rather than an image on the box. So it uses computer vision to determine what to think. We can also try this with the iPhone box. We can bring in the, the iPhone box and say, what is this? You just hold the button on the side, you talk and you let go. Let me take a look. And it takes a look. And this is an iPhone. The image shows the packaging box for an iPhone with the phone itself visible inside the box. This is so interesting. So the Rabbit R1 cannot tell the difference between like a picture of a, of a thing and a uh, actual device. Like it, like it, it is an iPhone, but it's a picture of an iPhone rather than an actual iPhone. So that's the computer vision. We can of course turn it around um, I'm going to just go ahead and turn it around and then ask it, what do you see? And it processes here, takes some time. Taking a look now. Taking a look now. I see a young man wearing glasses and holding a Sony camera in front of himself. He appears to be taking a selfie or photographing himself. The background is blurry, but it looks like the inside of a room or building. And there we go. So you can turn the camera around using the scroll wheel and ask it in front of you or behind you and use the vision on the Rapid R1 um, to have it help out and tell you what's around. Now to go home, you just press the Rapid R1 button twice and it takes us home back to the home screen. Now we looked at some commands earlier on the Rapid R1, but it's really helpful when you just ask it questions. So we can say, What's the news regarding J. Cole right now? You just hold down the button, you start talking, the ears go up and it starts listening. It does take a little bit to respond. Looking uh, it up now. So it looks up. J. Okay, I hope that wasn't the response because that was, that was not a good response. <laughs> just the word J. What's the news regarding J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar? And when we let go there, um, so the rabbit loves to animate there. It's bouncing up and down. Um, so you can ask questions. You've got to be very patient. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's definitely an early, early product right now. They're working on bugs. They're working on new features. Cole has recently apologized for a diss track aimed at Kendrick Lamar titled Seven Minute Drill, which is part of his surprise album Might Delete Later. Cole expressed remorse for the song during his performance at the Dreamville Festival in Raleigh, North Carolina on Sunday, stating that he felt terrible about the situation and vowing to update or remove the song from streaming platforms. Give me a moment to look that up for you. J. Cole has recently expressed regret over his diss track targeting Kendrick Lamar, titled Seven Minute Drill, which is part of his surprise album, Might Delete Later. The feud between the two are... I'll go ahead and turn it off there as it's repeating itself. I asked Cole it twice. later expressed remorse. Stop talking. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the Rabbit R1. You can ask it questions. It can answer them. Um, we saw things earlier like the weather. It seems like your message is incomplete. Could you please provide more context or clarify your request? Cool. So it loves to talk back, even when you tell it to stop talking. Um, so you can ask it all kinds of questions. You can get the latest news. The only thing is you just got to be very patient as this is very early software in the age of AI. Um, 
in terms of it has features where you can order food and they're working on a action model that allows you to um, just do anything. You remember when we first set this up, we connected things like our DoorDash account and our Uber account. So I can say, get me an Uber ride to Disneyland. Now, these actions. Arranging your ride now. These actions take. Uber may take a while to load on RabbitOS and may not be available in all regions. So there we go. And they say it right away. It takes forever. We will be here for the next 30 to 60 seconds. And it takes time. You just have to be used to that. Um, I'm not going to demo the Uber because um, it pops up with my address and all of those details. But it's a really interesting thing that you can give it a command like that and it will dictate it for you. You can also say, I'm hungry. Um, we connected our DoorDash account earlier. So let's take a Okey look. Okie I'll help you order some food. Uh, DoorDash may take a while to load on Rabbit OS and may not be available in all regions. So again, it lets you know that it can take a while. We'll be sitting here for a few seconds or minutes, depending on the connection and the latency. This is something I hope they are working on at Rabbit R1 because in their demos, when they announced this thing in January, it made it seem like this would happen in 30 seconds. And it's been way more than 30 seconds as I've asked it to order food and it just sits there, processes, it takes a little while. Um, and then you just have got, you just have to be patient and we hope that they'll eventually fix this um, and make this a lot faster and easier for us to, you know, order food should take like five seconds, not 30 plus seconds. So it's still bouncing around, but eventually a screen does pop up. Here, we got it, you know, after some time waiting, it's popped up. We can order some bagels. Again, you can't use the touch screen to touch and modify all of this. You have to use the scroll wheel to scroll down and select all of the different options. So it's got some options right here, and then you can select an option with the button on the side, and it loads the menu and allows you to start purchasing using DoorDash um, and making an order delivery from that restaurant. You can see even the loading menu is taking forever, but here we can buy a $9.50 bagel, cheese, something, an uh, image hasn't popped up, something with meat. You can scroll down, you can see all the options. So it's taking a little while for the images to load in and there it goes. But this is how you order DoorDash on your Rabbit R1. Um, Definitely something that needs improvement because it does take a while, but once it loads, it loads. And the user interface is not as, you know, pleasant as the phone right now. You know, on the phone, you can confirm your address. You can see where it's being delivered. Um, it's just very, um, it's just much better on the phone right now. It's hard to describe this process right here on the Rabbit R1 because it's early. It's not fully baked. Um, and they've got a lot of improvement to make this something that you would use every day confidently compared to your smartphone. So really interesting features there. You can use it to order food. You can use it to call a ride and you can also use it to look up information. Um, so we've got AI assistants talking to us all over here. Um, so really interesting software. Um, and yeah, that's how you use the Rabbit R1. Um, you know, you've got the scroll wheel from the back there. You've got the side button. You've got the SIM card tray, the USB-C. You press it to turn it on, and you just hold to talk. You shake to go in settings, and um, you can ask it any type of news question. Um, you can use, the, you can double tap to access the camera. Want to promote your business in front of tech enthusiasts? You can sponsor AppFind to get a shout out on a video or even your own dedicated video. To learn more, see our rate card and request a sponsorship. You can click our link in the description to Passion Fruit to learn more and inquire about a sponsorship. So this has been a complete beginner's guide of the Rabbit R1. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and let us know what your favorite Rabbit R1 feature is in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next technology video. We love producing these for you and can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.